Welcome to the summit here on Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged today to get to visit with the head baseball coach of Friends University, Adam Nicias, who has recently picked up his 500th win. You know, coach, we've been uh, talking about some milestones here on the summit lately, but I have to tell you, 500, that's a pretty big number. You know, it's it's humbling. I don't know if it's really sunk in yet, um, you know, and I, I think a lot of people, a lot of close people to me say it's just because you're old. <laughs> um, which they're right. Um, I've been in it a long time. Um, so I've, I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity to be in it this long. And, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a humbling number. Well, coach, seriously, that's just part of it. I mean, if you, if you're going to be in it for that land, if you're going to be in it that long and you're going to get a little bit older anyway, you know, why not pick up a few <laughs> wins along the way? So right. that sounds good. Congratulations on that. Now, listen, I know that, uh, wins that are important for you right now here in 2021, you start off the season 3-0 and with a sweep of Peru State to get to that number. I want to come back to it in a moment because by all rights, and quite frankly, you should have hit 500 last season. It was an abrupt stop to the year. So talk about how the program is doing right now over the course of the last 10 months and getting into 2021. You know, it, it seemed like forever since we coached a game, um, and it seemed like forever since the players actually got to play a game with the scoreboard turned on. <laughs> so we're, we're doing okay. You know, it, it's, it's been interesting, um, with, with the COVID stuff. Um, it's, it's just navigation for the most part and trying to keep kids healthy and, and making good decisions. Um, if you know what I mean. So it, it's, it's a good start. Um, we usually, we're usually somewhat prepared, um, that time of year. We got lucky with some weather around here, um, early this, this January. So, um, it, it was, it, it's always a struggle this time of year. Um, and it kind of comes down to who's a little more prepared than the other, the other guy. And, um, can you get outside and get through the things that you absolutely need to get through to be ready to play? Yeah. You know, at this point, I mean, we still have a few days left in January. You have three <laughs> games already in the book. So I'd, I'd call that a win and even in and of itself, yeah. Uh, 21 years as a head coach, 24 years coaching collegiate baseball. I, there's a lot just to be said about that alone. One of the things though, that does stand out to me is that your 11th season at friends and you spent 10 years prior to that at, uh, Dakota Wesley. And I know there's a gap in between the two, but, uh, it really is two different eras and what a testament to get to stay at not just one program that long, but two programs for that length of time. It was. I, I was lucky enough to get a head job when I was pretty young. I think I was 24 um, and took over a program up there that was struggling. So it took a couple of years to get things back on track. And then lucky enough, actually, to that gap in between was at University of Nebraska at Kearney um, as the associate head coach. And a, a really close colleague of mine um, brought me down to join his staff. And I, it was a wonderful two years. Um, and then friends came calling. So, and again, we kind of took over a program that was kind of shuffling a little bit. Um, so we kind of had to rebuild a couple. Um, so um, all my older friends always tell me, you know, there's four or five years right there. You should have way more. <laughs> um, and I said, no, I, I don't, I don't think so. Um, we're, we, that's, that's what it is. And yeah, it was 10 long, hard, cold years in South Dakota. Um, that's a, that's a tough place to play college baseball, but um, we got through and, and did some pretty good things up there. And Friends has been really fun. Um, I love Wichita. Um, the university has been good. So it's kind of been a progress here, too. But we're I, I think we're hopefully uh, maybe on the other side of the hump. Um, who knows? Um, we've had some success here, but um, hopefully there's more to come. Well, I'm sure the folks in Mitchell, South Dakota, appreciate what you did <laughs> during your time there and, and uh, your alma mater, too, I believe. Uh, and was, uh, yep. I, 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 I got really good at a snowblower up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a part of it in baseball. I'm sure yep. in South Dakota, you, you have to be able to use the proper equipment. We're speaking with Coach Adam Nicias, the baseball coach at Fringe University. And by the way, please do consider subscribing to the channel Midwest Sports Net. We'd appreciate that here on the summit today. Coach, in, in those two eras, as I mentioned, I, I think that's a pretty big deal. That really stands out to me getting double digits, really getting a decade at both places. You not only put your stamp on it. But it, it shows that that you care about each university to be able to to stay there that long. With 500 wins, man, there have to be a lot of things that you can look back on and and remember fondly during that time. 
Yeah, there's there's a bunch. And, you know, I have to remind everybody, I never played one inning of any of those 500 or however many <laughs> you played to get to 500. But, yeah, you know, the O2 team up at Dakota Wesleyan was was very special. We had a draft pick in 06. Um, we just we were we were very successful for a northern team up there. Um, you know, and you always kind of think is the grass always green on the other side. But Mitchell kind of sucked me in a little bit and the people there. And it was it was a it was a cool place to start my career. That's for sure. And had a couple ADs that were really good at what they do. And um, I was I was I, I didn't necessarily want to get out of there, um, but it man, it's cold up there and it makes things <laughs> so much more difficult when it comes to our sport. So getting south was was something that was had always been on my mind. Coach, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, the the three wins this season is something that I know is on your mind right now. And starting off with the sweep against Peru State, already with three in the books, and January is not done yet. And I know there's still a, a couple more games on the schedule before the the month changes. But one of the things that I look at and and uh, see a couple of players right now: Sam Ingberg hitting five seventy one, Jared Bedard hitting five hundred. You have two players right now that are hitting better than five hundred. Now I realize. Uh, numbers are what they are in baseball. Those things are going to, they're going to even out, but you know, start the season has to, has to be something feels pretty good. Yeah. Those two kids have done a really good job and, and Jared's Berard's our three hole hitter um, who, who really does a good job at the plate. And Sam's actually our little nine hole hitter who runs really well and plays center field. But you know, and Sam's a COVID freshman. Um, so to, for him to be able to, to have an opening weekend, that's, that's his first true college baseball was this year, um, last weekend. So, um, hats off to him. He's worked so hard. Um, he's come a long way from last year to where he is this year and he deserves every bit of it. Um, Jared's a little different story. He's, he's been at a couple places, so has some experience, um, and, and kind of understands college baseball a little bit. Um, and he's just a really a pure hitter. Um, who just just goes in there and does his thing. And we're really happy to have those two in our lineup right now. Well, Coach, uh, as uh, you continue on with your career, I, I realize it, it's going to take a you know a, a trip or two more around the sun to, to get to that next <laughs> milestone, but that's just a part of it. Uh, what, in, in your opinion, does it take to, to keep racking up those wins? And, and I realize, again, it's not about just each individual win. It's about the players. It's about the team. But there's a lot that goes on, into it. And, and ultimately, you know, when, when things are done right, the wins come from it. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of moving pieces to that. First and foremost, you have to have a wife that understands. Um, and that's, that's difficult. But my wife is unbelievable. And she gets the ups and downs. And coach came home mad today or, you know, she, that that's first and foremost. Um, God love her. And I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without her. Secondly, I think you have to have great assistance. Um, nobody can do it by themselves. And I've been very fortunate enough to have a really good coaching staff along the way. Um, I love our coaching staff this year. So I think that that in a nutshell, um, and then you have to be able to recruit good players. You know, um, we're not out going, going to get the five-star guys and the, the big time guys. We're, we're out trying to find kids that, that can progress and, and project out to be good players for us in our system. So, and our system's a little bit unique. Um, but recruiting is the key. And then you got to coach them up when they get here and you got to hope they're motivated to want to get better every day. Um, we don't reinvent the wheel by any means here. Um, <laughs> we do have a different way of doing some things, um, but um, it all comes down to the players and can we prepare the players so they're ready when, when game day comes. Well, it sounds to me like Wichita is a, a good destination and it sounds like things are going well there at friends. Coach Adam Nicias. Congratulations, 500 wins in the books, and I know more are on the way. Success to you this season. Thank you so much for taking time for us today. I appreciate it, Joey. Thanks for having me.